think if you're a woman, it's very difficult to not be aware that you are a minority anywhere. Although we are 51% of the population. Right. The MCU, what started off strong and brought an era of superhero movies, has now outstayed its welcome and brought in the era of superhero movies. Marvel Phase 4, without a doubt, was a far cry from the highs of the Infinity War and the fun of the Iron Man movie. Nothing like watching Robert Downey Jr. pretend to be a drunk. A role he was born to play. What was once a well thought out and planned story arc soon gave way to gender politics and representation. The MCU went from being an event to being something you were ambivalent towards at best and at worst antagonistic towards. This song is total cringe, total cringe, total cringe all along. Do 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 do. This is trash. God damn it. <laughs> Why won't they let the MCU die? Bring the asteroid god! Disney has gone from the land of dreams to the never-ending nightmare. Like a parasite, Disney buys beloved brands and franchises, and then runs them into the ground to keep the House of Mouse afloat and fluid in Walt Disney's brain jar. But finally, there may be some light at the end of the tunnel. A long, dark tunnel. Victoria Alonso exits Marvel Studios. Much like you, I was like, eh, whatever, my give-a-damn just broke. Turns out, this woman was responsible for a lot of the trash going on in the MCU. If a woman creates a property that becomes successful, she takes care of it. But when women are put in charge of properties they didn't create, I swear to God, all of them just run it into the ground with their scary great ideas. I mean, look at Victoria Alonso and then look at JK Rowling. Which one would you trust with an intellectual property? That's right, kids, the turf. This is officially my new favorite wallet brand, Exter. They're the world's largest small wallet brand, designing innovative solutions to improve the way you carry your everyday item. Removing cards from my Exter wallet is as simple as a push of a button. It also comes with a tracker that you can use with an app to track your wallet just in case you lose it or it's stolen. Your wallet is trackable worldwide, so you really don't have to worry about losing it. Kind of crazy. If you've lost your wallet, you can call it. It works with Google Home, Alexa, and Siri. Did I also mention that the tracker itself is solar powered? Two hours of sunlight gives you up to three months of a charge. Wild. Not a fan of the metal wallets? Well, extra as you covered with premium leather variants. All of the leather is sourced from WLG Gold rated tanners. And I dare say it's quite elegant. These small form factor wallets completely replace the wallets of yesteryear that your father used to have. Before I forget, it also has RFID protection. Your money, your cards, and your identity are safer than ever before with the extra wallet because it protects you from skimming. Go to shop.exter.com slash it's a Gundam to save 25% on the extra anniversary sale or click the link in the description and use the code it's a Gundam at checkout. Victoria Alonso was behind such great ideas like changing Namor to Namor and also making him an Aztec Indian, and not just any Aztec Indian, Kukla Khan, the god. Brilliant. Seriously, and thanks to inclusion, I'm here. I wouldn't be here without inclusion. That's nice. You should write it down. For instance, a year ago, remember when some MCU big shot said something like, the X-Men name is outdated, and the ultimate sign of being either A, so far out of touch, you make Michael Jackson look based in his wacko jacko years. Or B, you had an agenda to push. She was a galaxy brain. I don't know where the future is going, Alonzo told Nuke the Fridge. It's funny that people call it the X-Men. There's a lot of female superheroes in the X-Men group, so I think it's outdated. I think you deserve to be fired. That's what I think. For a long, long time, the only comic books that made moves for Marvel was literally Spider-Man and the X-Men. You'd never see Nike have a CEO go, I think that the Nike logo's a little outdated. We should call it Swoosh. She was the one pushing a new title for the X-Men movies by calling it The Mutants. Once again, this proves she's not in the comic books. Brethren, to strive for freedom and equality for all men, their efforts have been repaid with brutality and hatred. Fire on them! 
Mutants was used as a derogatory term towards people that had the X gene. But she saw the ideas, the mutants, as being more inclusive towards women. The X-Men was already diverse. How do you make something already inclusive more inclusive? By adding drag queens, baby. <laughs> oh my god, make it stop, Stu. YouTube's already punishing me and I'm still doing this. Here's another article that I don't remember where I got it from. Even though she left on Friday, but no one is really covering it until Monday when the meetings happen to decide how to present it. She was still receiving a producer credit for upcoming Marvel projects, including The Guardians of the Galaxy, Secret Invasion, Ironheart, Echo, Agatha, Coven of Chaos, and The Marvel. Looking at all these titles, only one of them will do well, and that'll be Guardians of the Galaxy. Everything else looks like an early obituary as far as content is concerned. Thank God she's out. Could you just imagine what she would have done with the X-Men? Odds are she would do the same thing that Marvel's currently doing to the X-Men with the Hellfire Club Gala. Ah yes, it's the X-Men going to their own version of the goddamn Met Gala every year. God help us all. In between saving the world, the X-Men have time for fashion. Who thought this up? Who? Like... We're, it's such a far cry from, like, Jim Lee's X-Men run. It's a totally different, totally different comic. Nothing but action-packed. Bam, bam, bam. The first appearance of Omega Red. It's just all bangers. You just you just get beaten over the head with deliciousness. <laughs> you get the X-Men now. And Colossus is wearing a cape. <laughs> Somebody make it stop. Oh my god, man. It's like there's like four gay spider people now. <laughs> One of them's cripple! I mean, how does the cripple spider gay woman stick to the wall? Somebody tell me. I've never seen a cripple spider do well climbing in real life. Okay, okay. I gotta focus. Oh Jesus Christ. Uh, the show Echo is coming out. Echo is like, I think, a deaf new Marvel character. I saw one comic panel where she was single and all the x-men are trying to hook up with her something dumb like that and it's just like okay i'm out i'm out pull the ripcord i'm gonna go buy old comic books agatha the coven of chaos at this rate you may as well give squirrel girl a tv show let's just grab every z-list marvel character and give them a show who else could we do um you know what give the new warriors a show the one with safe space and snowflake that's where we're heading the marvels It'll be a goddamn marvel if that movie makes any money. And you can quote me on that. Alonzo was also a very vocal member of Disney, which odds are led to Ron DeSantis kicking Mickey Mouse right in the sweetness. Earlier today, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis signed a bill stripping Disney of its longtime self-governing status in that state. For decades, the area surrounding Walt Disney World, known as the Reedy Creek Improvement District, had its own taxing and bonding authority. Now, this had allowed Disney to make its own planning and zoning decisions, as well as have its own fire department. <laughs> oh, shit! In addition to her behind-the-scenes work, Alonzo has been an important ambassador for the studio's representation efforts and was outspoken during Disney's dispute with Florida over its Don't Say Gay bill. As long as I'm at Marvel Studios, I will fight for representation, Alonzo said. Who is gay? Okay. You want a cookie? Jesus Christ. The gays are still trying to pretend they're like a, a, a minority or something. Like nobody listens. Capcom recently did a game release and had drag queens on it. And we're still pretending. Oh my God. Nobody wants to see gay people. She isn't happy. Look what the homosexuals have done to me. Good Lord. All her meddling cost Disney so much money. No wonder Bob Iger came back and she got kicked out. Could you imagine? On the movie front. All of her scary great ideas made Marvel Phase 4 actually a failure. And from what I understand, and when I say I understand, I'm sniffing around nerd rotic sources, Phase 4 lost money. Then you look on the political front, and she helped Disney lose its self-governing power in Florida by basically being kind of annoying. I don't believe people in entertainment should be lecturing other people or meddling in politics, in my personal opinion. Your job is to, yo... Make people kind of get away from reality, not just drag us all into it. I, I don't need that. Nobody needs that. That's what Twitter's for, dude. Then you find out she was a pain in the ass to work for if you're a VFX artist. 
which explains why most Marvel shows and movies had a level of VFX quality you would have expected from a PlayStation 1 game. It is crazy. We say to give a woman, woman power is like to give a gun to a monkey. We have stopped doing that ever since the 1999 Astana Zoo Massacre. Remember the Thor? That little floating black kid's head that just looked like they stuck a GIF image and like a light flare or something? It was wild. Marvel Studios has come under fire before for its approach to visual effects and what has been described as pixel effing. A micromanaging process that saw Alonzo and Fihi personally oversee every shot, piling on work and demanding changes up until the last possible second. After Alonzo's dismissal, Chris Lee, a vulture reporter who has extensive coverage on the post-production woes of Marvel Studios, introduced the phrase pixel fucky to the general populace, said his sources describe her as singularly responsible for Marvel's toxic work environment. A kingmaker who rewarded unquestioned fealty with an avalanche of work, but who also maintained a blacklist that kept FX pros wide-eyed with fear. Ah, sounds like doing YouTube if your name's It's a Gundam. Whoa, Marvel pays 20% less than other VFX studios. God, they're like the YouTube of movies. Alonzo leaving Marvel. Will this make the MCU better? I doubt it. I don't have my hopes up. This seems like a small course correction which was needed a whole phase ago. And of course, Alonzo being fired didn't sit well with journalists. The Marvel mess. Too long didn't read basically sums up as the usual, you know, misogyny. Is it because she's a nightmare micromanager terrorizing the VFX artists who work on Marvel movies? <laughs> yes. Is it because Marvel has been an unprecedented run of bad press over the last couple years mostly related to VFX industry? Is it because Disney is under pressure from shareholders to cut Marvel's increasingly insane spending costs? Is it because Marvel got Whoa. and Alonzo is an outspoken queer woman? Is that to blame for it? Actually, yes. A little of column A, B, and C, and absolutely none of D, and anyone who thinks so needs to grow the F up. Marvel has really been leaning towards a certain way that's making things less interesting to watch. It couldn't possibly be that. And it's hard to ignore the undercurrent of misogyny surrounding the news of her firing. From online nerds crowing Ding Dong the Witch is dead and vocally hoping Kathleen Kennedy is next, she's not. Yeah, and that's why Grogu is like doing stupid flips over Mandalorians and using arm pistols because Kathleen Kennedy is a god. Winner! There you go. Did you teach him that? How does it feel to have lived long enough to see all of your favorite franchises go down in flames? Feels great. <laughs> you look at the state of Star Wars, honest to God, and the fact that Kathleen Kennedy is not fired is amazing. It's amazing. A billion dollar brand is probably worth so much less because of her meddling. And we're sitting here and going, oh, it's just the online nerds and misogynists that don't want to see a woman in power. I don't care if a woman's in power, but if she's lousy at her job, get her the hell out. As if Alonzo is solely responsible for the state of the VFX industry. No, she's just responsible for what happened in Disney. Disney Marvel has been under pressure from shareholders, from fans, from vendors, from PR problems, and they did. Now let's see if any of the actual problem gets solved. I hope to God it does. Because Marvel sucks now. Don't do it! Just when you think it's over, Mickey Mouse falls down the stairs and his shoes fell off. Victoria Alonso's attorney blasts ridiculous claims. She was fired over Argentina in 1985, says executive, was silenced by Disney. It was an exclusive with Vanity Fair. The too long didn't read basically states as Victoria Alonso got a gig with Amazon to do a movie called Argentina 1985 and supposedly had the blessings of Disney. But apparently she didn't, or maybe she did. Or maybe Disney's just doing what YouTube does to me, where they sit there and act like they're fine with you, but they're looking for any reason to get rid of you. And frankly, with the way Marvel Phase 4 went, they found a way out. Do you know how hard it is to fire a gay person today? And I quote, The idea that Victoria was fired over a handful of press interviews related to the promotional passion project about human rights and democracy was nominated for an Oscar, which she got Disney's blessing to work on. Absolutely ridiculous, Glasser says. 
Victoria, a gay Latin who had the courage to criticize Disney. How come her criticizing Disney is like courageous and bold? But when I do it or Nerd Roddick does it or the critical drinker does it, we're all just horrible people. I don't understand. She was silenced. Then she was terminated when she refused to do something she believed was reprehensible. Disney and Marvel made a really poor decision that will have serious consequences. There is a lot more to this story and Victoria will be telling it shortly in one form or another. Mm, don't need you, don't care. <sighs> Out you go. D to be real. The only thing I cared about was getting my rocks off to some good superhero films, and that just didn't happen, and now I'm kind of burnt out. Like, if it doesn't involve the Avengers the way I want to see them, or, you know, the X-Men from the 90s, I don't care. So basically, there's going to be a lawsuit now. la -dee da At the end of the day, she's going to get paid, but what Disney will have to pay her will be a drop in the bucket compared to the $120 billion they lost for Marvel Phase 4 in the beginning of 5. Think of that. You pay... An LGBTQ member that's a little bit outspoken to the point of where Bob Iger literally had to tell her, you know, you could chill out right now. <laughs> We're kind of hurting. You pay her what? 200, 300 million, maybe five? That's nothing. Compared to the 120 billion you lost off of her scary great ideas. They make it off like a bandit. I'd fire her too. I'd, I'd, I'd try to fire her for like something ridiculous. Like, did you just sneeze on... Dave Filoni's bald spot, you're out of here! You, you're done! Your willful hatred of heterosexual men will not stand here at Disney. Words you'll never hear ever in your life.